Thank you, Brother Gavin. It's like a cup of cold water. Yes, it's refreshing. I love, I love to hear the experience. You know, someone who has, <clears throat> who has tasted and seen so much uh, that Brother Gibbon has. Um, such, a, such a blessing that we're able to uh, partake of his labors. What a wonderful arrangement in the kingdom of God that we can benefit by proxy. <laughs> not, every, not, not everything's like that. I have basically two exhortations. One is, <clears throat> be fully persuaded that God is true. To have full assurance of hope, you're going to have to be fully convinced that God is true. In other words, nobody's going to bend your ear on, on some issue of, well, that, ca that can't mean that just because it says it. Mm -hmm. It's not gonna, it's, it's not, not gonna put the brake, you're not gonna put the brakes on. Mm -hmm. And you're fully convinced, you're fully persuaded that, that God is true. Well, Abraham was an example of that. God had promised that it would be through Isaac. It had been, it had been played out in, 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 uh, w w Abraham was fully persuaded that mm -hmm. it was gonna be Isaac. Yeah. And so because of that persuasion, then he was, uh, he was willing to offer him up as a, uh, as a sacrifice. Um, the scripture speaks about doubting nothing. That's being fully persuaded that God is true. I, I think there's a, there's a lot of um, questioning today about things that God has said, about things that God has done. Um, and that people are able to do that because they're not convinced that God is true. Uh, we hear people question the uh, different uh, occasions in Scripture about um, Jacob and Esau, a prime example. They question the the uh, what they consider to be a contradiction of what Paul says and what James says, and they question different what they consider to be moral or ethical issues that are in the Bible. Well, that, the only reason those issues are issues are because they're, that person is not convinced that God is true. When you're convinced that God is true, well, then that, that just that opens the door. You become a, a, a candidate then for full assurance of hope because everything that God has said and everything that God has done is, is calculated toward, towards that end to give you the full assurance of hope. It's not, in the end, just think about uh, the world in retrospect and the playing out of the eternal salvation and the uh, finishing of the, the good fight of faith and the race that, that was set before the saints. And what a, um, what a dishonor for someone who wore his name to question what he said. And in fact, what a foolish, what a, what a utterly foolish stance to question the one who cannot lie. Yeah. Amen. Just think about how that, how, the, how that must look from heaven. The angels, everything's, everything's cleared to them. They, they, don't, they don't wrestle with short-sightedness and seeing in a glass darkly. They don't wrestle with uh, ignorance and, and uh, uh, stupidity and, or anything like this. Think about what unbelief looks like from their perspective. Yes, amen. You see that... <laughs> It, it, make, it makes sense. It's good to, to think like that. Yeah. <clears throat> what, do, what does this look like from heaven? And it, it'll, it's a good perspective to, yeah, to uh, inject into your day. Mm -hmm. The second uh, thing to exhort you about is be fully convinced that salvation is right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Amen. Now, amen. <clears throat> there's, a, there's a lot of enemies to this as well. Um, the the Holy Spirit posed this question, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Well, on one hand, we know that a lot of people lay things to the charge of God's elect. It's, it's regular. In fact, you'll, you'll hear accusations in your own self about yourself, haven't you? So this question is not that it's impossible for anyone to charge the people of God with with something, it it's rather that it's impossible to make it stick. Mm -hmm. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? If they are God's elect, I mean, obviously that's a that has to be that has to be established. 
But the point is, when God justifies someone, no one's going to make them guilty. Mm -hmm. And that's because salvation is right. Mm -hmm. Another way of saying that is that God is just and the justifier Amen. of him which believeth in Jesus. God, in other words, God's not bending the rules to say that someone's saved. Yes, that's um, right. You can, uh, uh, in a very real uh, way, the standards in uh, American education has been changed, and so then that boosts everybody's grades. You know, you make 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 people the, make the slackers look better by well, you just you just kind of have a sliding sliding uh, yeah. scale, uh -huh. and then you can kind of you can kind of make anybody look good. You know, that way <laughs> things I shouldn't mention. It's like um, no child left behind. It just you just you can just give them whatever grade. I don't I know they're not not saying that, but. The um, salvation's right. right. When God says, I see no iniquity in Jacob, it's because He sees no iniquity right. in Jacob. That's why. It's when, when God imputes righteousness, mm -hmm. it, He's imputing His own righteousness. Right. He's not covering. That's, right. that's what whitewashed is. Uh -huh. When Jesus, Jesus accused the Pharisees of being whited sepulchers. It's a, it's a watered-down paint that just covers, covers it over. It makes the tomb look a little more presentable. Yeah. That's not what salvation does. Salvation is right. Amen. He, when a person's born again, they really are new. When He gives them a new heart, it really is a new heart. When He causes them to walk in His ways, they really are walking in His ways. Yes. Not, it's not like puppetry. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not like ventriloquism. Yeah, okay. Salvation is right. What God has said about His people is not just hearsay. Mm -hmm. It's not... It's not just pretending. God's not. Pre and some people think that this is really the way salvation works, yeah. and I know that because they're content to be the way they were yes. after confessing Christ. Uh -huh. And those things don't. Those things don't agree. Those things don't don't add up. Yeah. Salvation is right. People really are changed, mm -hmm. and that's why the Holy Spirit <clears throat> asked that question: Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Yeah. The accuser of the brethren was cast out of heavenly places because salvation is right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. There wasn't any place yeah. for the accuser right. because, there, because sin in its totality was taken away. Sin was taken away from God, and so the accuser of the brethren was, was cast out because there wasn't any place. Well, he was there. <coughs> Satan, think about it this way, from a very personal perspective, Satan doesn't have to lie to me to bring something up about my sin. <clears throat> because they really because I really have sin. <clears throat> but in Christ, he can't accuse. That's right. Because sin's been taken away. Because salvation's right. That's why the accuser of the brethren has been cast out. See when you're when you're convinced of this that salvation is right See, then assurance is within your grasp then. Yeah. Amen. When you're convinced that everything God said is true, mm -hmm. then assurance is within your grasp. You see how subtle this can be. Mm -hmm. When people change, they, they call them versions, they call them translations, but they're really commentaries. Yeah. Uh -huh. And they change the way the Scripture says this or that. Uh -huh. It's because they're not convinced that what God has said is true. Yes. That God Himself is true. Uh -huh. I like the way the Holy Spirit says it. Just let God be true and every man a liar. When you just, when you just settle that in your mind, uh -huh. then it really simplifies things. If it came from God, it's true. If it came from man, it's a lie. That's the, it really is just that true. So there are many enemies to, to your assurance. And I would say the majority, if maybe not all, of the enemies to your assurance start as a thought. Yeah. They start in thought. Fiery darts, you know, quenching, quenching the fiery darts of the wicked one. Those, those are thoughts. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not uh, hurling uh, flaming arrows that will kill you. He's hur hurling flaming arrows to think about. Mm -hmm. That's how, now they will kill you if they land, yeah. mm -hmm. and they're not quenched. The little foxes that spoil the vine, they're thoughts. Yeah. Uh -huh. Don't forget... <clears throat> That see thinking is is like a uh, it's like a crux of spiritual life because if you if you think wrong about God, everything changes. Yes, amen. And likewise, if you think wrong about yourself, that's what James was talking about when he said, "Look at the perfect into the uh, perfect law of liberty and go and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what man, manner of man he was." It's that he his thinking about himself was all wrong because the law is telling us what kind of people we are. Brother Bob talked about that this morning. 
So the law tells you by, by reflection, mm -hmm. by contrast, the law tells us what kind of person that we are. So thinking, fiery darts, uh, the thief, like the thief on the cross, he, he, he's like the old man, throwing out these thoughts, you know, save yourself and us. See, the, the old man really is not concerned about you, he's concerned about himself. And so when, he's, when he says save yourself, he's, he's really talking about himself. Don't forget that your chief enemy is a liar. Yes, and he's the father of lies. See, so this should tell you, if he's my enemy and he's the father of lies, then thinking and discernment has to be a strong point. Yeah. That's why the Lord, one of the reasons why the Lord said, come, let us, let's reason together. Mm -hmm. See, it's not, it's not just um, like sitting down to have tea time. Mm -hmm. it, it, or just to just sit down to have a visit. Yeah. Come, let us reason together, because reasoning together with God enables you to detect the enemy of your soul yeah. as you reason. So when reasoning and thinking is your strong point, uh -huh. see, then you can take hold of what God what God has said. Think about it this way. In the, the opposite side of, of the fact that your enemy is a liar, your God has sent you a book. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. See, that tells you. Yeah. It tells you something. that the, the thinking you got to be exercised in spiritual thinking. Amen. Uh, Amen. Because that, that's, where, that's where the battle starts. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that's where the battle's lost. Brother Ricky's pointed out before that by the time, by the time you sin, the battle's already lost. That's not... Yeah. That, then now you have to be delivered. That's right. So, let us reason together. <clears throat> I think that's it. That's the exhortation. Be fully convinced that God's true. Be fully convinced that salvation's right. These words were very provoking to me uh, tonight. I'm very, very thankful for them. Open up for any of the brother now to...